very night I have called her from the unknown depths of time itself. She is here. And with her coming, the world will never be as it was. Neither man nor animal will be the same. This, I, Dr. Carlo Lombardi, have brought into being. I just don't feel I belong in your world of yachts and racing stables. Some of those tycoons in there, including your father, kind of frighten me. Oh, come now. This type of life shouldn't be too hard to get used to. Let's face it. I'm an hourly farm boy with a professorship at the university. But basically, a farm boy. I don't belong in all that. Very well, then we'll get you away from them for a while. A walk along the ocean will do it. I'd like that. I don't know how your fiancé will react to that idea. Oh, Bob, my ex-fiancé. That makes quite a difference. Come on, Ted. So that horrid blonde finally let you go, eh? Hmm. That horrid blonde represents an investment portfolio of half a million bucks. Where's Dorothy? She went for a walk with Ted. Oh, I wish she hadn't. Why? Well, Dr. Lombardi said something terrible is going to happen along this part of the coast tonight. Some visitation from the occult world. Uh, the occult world. Oh, no, really. Seriously, you must meet him. He's wonderful. Some women keep pets or grow roses for kicks. My wife supports quack cultists. <laughs> a couple of years ago, it was that spiritualistic medium. Last year, Swami or something or other. And now Dr. Lombardi. Well, so long as it amuses you. Oh, no, seriously. He puts this girl into a deep trance and takes her back 300 years. Now, she tells about her life in England. I tell you, it's uncanny. Yeah, yeah. Looks pretty serious between Dorothy and Ted. She's falling for him. I'm afraid it's pretty one-sided so far. Nonsense. If she wants him, she'll get him. What's the... Uh, Market price on professors of psychic research. Not very high, I imagine. Oh, you ghost. <laughs> Mother's a little disappointed in you. She thought you'd liven up the party with some of the tricks of your trade. You know, hypnotism, demonstrations of thought transference. I know. She thought I'd make it an age regression party. I told her that was Dr. Lombardi's feel, not mine. Well, he's challenged me publicly and privately to disprove the authenticity of his experiments. That sounds like King's Bar. 
jealous of me. You haven't given him cause to be yet. He wants us to follow him. to me. It was Dr. Lombardi. Six hundred dollars here. That lets robbery out. Hey, here's something. A piece of seaweed. All the way to the door. Now the carpet's wet here. Might be a footprint. Go into the kitchen and see if there's any flour, will you? You willing to swear you saw a long body coming out of this house? Of course. make a footprint like that. Clever man could have forged it. You think a human could have done this? Oh, I almost forgot about your firm belief in Lombardi's black magic and occult powers. It's not me, it's my wife. She swears by him. Now, what did he say was coming to roam among us? A creature out of time? The first life form of someone living today, over a million years old. You see, Doctor, that's how civilized we are. Scratch the veneer and what do you find? A whole carload of superstitions waiting to be catered to. Vampires, witchcraft, supernatural creatures being brought back from the past. He's got a lot of people listening to him. It's not me, it's my wife. All right, it's your wife. You willing to identify Lombardi now? Make things a lot simpler. Sure. You wait here for the lab boys. I want pictures. Plenty of them. You're going to leave me alone here? It's not like it was an ordinary stiff. I can take that seven days a week. Come on. But, but it, it might come back. Oh, but it's not you that is superstitious. It's your wife who's the gullible one. Lousy night. No business at all. I find it very pleasant. I heard a scream from your place about 15 minutes ago. I thought it was Andrea. I ran over to check up, see if she was in trouble. I told you to keep away from her. I knew it long before you did, Doc. I knew her when she was a carnival follower. Every time we hit a town, she'd be there waiting for us. I've asked you to forget that. Well, anyway, I heard the screams. So I went over. The back door was open. I went in. She was out cold. Why do you keep her under like that? I thought she was dead. I was going to call the cops. It's so tiresome having to warn you to mind your own business. 
so very tiresome. Well, I'm naturally curious. Poor kid, she was out cold. What's it all about, Doc? Why do you keep her under like that? I have an idea you'll find out soon. Sleep, Andrea. A very deep sleep. Now I will touch you and slowly you'll awake. Shortly after midnight. You've had me in a deep hypnosis for more than an hour. I asked you not to do that. Well, you were tired. You needed the rest. I need to get away from here. Away from you. I hate this place. I hate the sound of the ocean. I hate you. You'll never leave me. You can't. I will. Someday I will. Soon. As long as I'm alive, I'll possess you. There's something beyond yourself that makes you need me. You've taken my soul away from me. The door is open. Come in. I'm Lieutenant James. Oh? Dr. Erickson. Uh, yes? Is this the man you saw coming out of the Jefferson house? Yes. There's no doubt in your mind? No. Well, he knows me quite well. I've been trying to interest him in my work for some time. And you don't deny you're in the Jefferson house approximately 15 minutes after 11? Not at all. I won't need you any longer, Doctor. Thank you. How are you, miss? What's it all about? Maybe we can talk about it over a cup of coffee. I'd like that. with you. You say you knew they were dead the minute you saw the open door. Yes. Pity. Nice young couple. She came out of the ocean, just as I said she would. And she'll come again. Look, I'm not a paying customer. I'm a police officer. She comes from the beginning of time. Huge and indestructible. 
And I'm the force that gives her life. All I know, you were seen coming out of that house, leaving two corpses behind you. And the occult world notwithstanding, I think I'll take you downtown and wait till the reports come in. Well, I can tell you what the reports will say. That no living thing killed them. Yeah, I know. It was a materialization of the prehistoric female. The transmigration of the soul of a living woman into her first life body. Save it. Save it for downtown. Now, come on, let's go. Thank you, Olga. Oh, that dog. He gives me the yitters. I get a nervous Adam Zeppelin in that makes my tie jump off. Morning, Mr. Chapel. Morning, Ted. Dorothy will be down in a minute. I'm certainly not too popular with that member of your family. Take him to the kitchen and get him something to eat, huh? The last time I took him to the kitchen, he need eat up the cook. Come on, dog. An early riser, Ted. Good. I like to see a man get up early. Shows he's aggressive, wants to get ahead. You're giving me too much credit, Mr. Chappell. This uh, Jefferson thing last night, pretty grim. Kept them all buzzing for a while after Dorothy came home. <laughs> it's surprising how many of them think that Lombardi had something to do with it. Whole gang's been down to see his show. Mrs. Chappell tried to bully me into going along. Take a look at that front page. I play a little game every morning. I call it my front page game. <laughs> I'm uh, getting a little old to play most of the others. <laughs> I read the front page every morning and see if I can pick out an item or two that'll make me a lot of money. Surprising how often it's worked out. Did you ever try it? No, I can't say I have. No, no. You read about the Jefferson murder? Yes, I... There's a million dollar idea in that. Last paragraph. Read it. One baffling aspect of the case concerns Dr. Carlo Lombardi, carnival hypnotist and prognosticator. Only last week he predicted that such a murder would take place, describing it with grisly accuracy. He was questioned by the police, but not held. You see a fortune in that? Yes. Yes. And it's right up your alley. And yours as a wedding present. You're serious, aren't you? Couldn't be more so. We'll take this two-bit local sideshow man and build him into the biggest thing in the country. Build him up until his name's on everyone's lips. Lombardi books, syndicated columns, lectures, television shows. This prediction of his is worth a million dollars, and you and I can do it. Where do I fit in? Well, can't you see? You can give him the stamp of authenticity. Dr. Erickson, psychic research specialist, says Lombardi experiments amazing. Open new avenues in the understanding of the subconscious. Hmm. They'll swallow it. They'll swallow it whole and love it. This is the sort of escape stuff the world's crying for. Look at my wife and her friends. It's a natural. It'll be a lark for me and money for you and Dorothy. I've been trained to fight stupidity and ignorance, not get rich on them. Men like Lombardi have put hypnosis back 25 years. They've taken a modern tool of science and made a plaything out of it. Worse than that, a weapon. And in the hands of quacks like Lombardi, a dangerous weapon. And you want me to help sell him to the public? <laughs> Wait until that loot starts rolling in. That'll take care of your scruples. I'll go and talk to him tomorrow. What do you say? Forget it. I don't need that kind of money. Yes, sir. Try your luck. Ten cents. One tenth of a dollar. Where's Lombardi's place? Right next door, but he's closed, been having trouble with the police. Yeah, I read about it in the papers. You want to get in, just jingle a couple of coins. The door's open automatically. Good evening, Mr. Chappell. I've been expecting you. How the devil did you know I was Chappell? What do you mean you were expecting me? I was communicating with your thoughts before you left your home. <laughs> 
communicating with my thoughts, huh? I suppose you can tell me what I'm doing here, too. Certainly. You come down here to discuss a business matter with me. Good guess, Lombardi. Remarkable guess. I'm a remarkable man. Would you come in, Mr. Chapel? Let's get to the point. How would you like to be a rich man as well as a remarkable one? Well, naturally, I... I have to get you out of this crazy place. You've got something to sell. How can you expect to get your price in here? The facts about reincarnation, 35 cents. I'll get you 350 for that. Well, I'd be most grateful, sir. Since we'll make them pay real money to see your act. I have no act. I have knowledge. <laughs> that's the boy, that's the boy. Keep a straight face and hit him hard. I'm a businessman, Lombardi. I can see money in this, big money. 50-50, what do you say? Well, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, Okay, sir. our deal starts as of now. Come over to my house tomorrow night. I'm having some people come over and might do us some good. Newspaper man, a book publisher, a doctor of psychic research, a Dr. Erickson. Oh, yes, I know him. One of my most outspoken critics. Mm -hmm. and get him involved, too, if you can, even if it's only to call you crazy. Make good publicity. That's what we need, publicity. And play it up big. Give them everything you've got. Some more of this she creature stuff. Some more predictions. Uh, murder next month, maybe. Unfortunately, it may happen sooner than that. Very much sooner. I feel her presence even now. She'll come out of the ocean tonight. That's the stuff. That's the stuff, the big lie. That's what sells. I'll see you tomorrow night. And remember, play it up big. We've got to shake them. We'll shake them. See you tomorrow night. You will go into a much deeper sleep. Very deep. You will go back in time. I command you, leave your body. Johnny. Oh, did I? Well, prove that, and I'll have to face a murder charge. Can you prove you were in here when it happened? I can. But I don't see what difference it makes. I warned you she'd come again, and you laughed at me. Not as hard as you're laughing at me right now. I'm going to book you. Well, on what charge? For being in communication with a world that you say doesn't exist? You're a murderer, and I'm going to prove it. 
Ah, Lieutenant, I urge you to keep the beaches clear. It's my civic duty. Take it easy. Will you? What's Chapel's interest in this maniac? I wouldn't know. I'm only his lawyer. Maybe he just hates to see injustice done. I'll bet. Or maybe it's because uh, Lombardi is entertaining at his house tonight. Doctor, are you all right? Yes. The next time this man is pulled in on some trumped up charge, we'll sue for false arrest. A most interesting experience. I'm quite certain I made a few new converts. Spoof stuff, Chapel. There must be money in it. Oh, no, no. You've got me wrong. This man's sensational. Genuine thing. He's made a convert out of me. Now I know there's a buck in it. <laughs> I'm so excited. Dr. Lombardi, here in my very own home. And I thought it was going to be a boring weekend. If what you say is true, I'm certainly going to drop the Ali Ben Ali group. They're becoming quite ordinary. Just about anyone can join. Hey, that son of Bob, he's as drunk as a lumberjack. Yeah, he drinks like a fish. Yeah, but not the same stuff. <laughs> Say, my feet's poop, you're keeping him filled up? Feet's is poop. For 18 years, I tried to teach you how to speak good American. Well, I, I speak just as good broken American as you do. Feet's is poop. All right, then, my foot's is peep. Oh, you're a million miles away, Ted. And just when I thought I was beginning to get through to you, Look, Dorothy, I'm out of my element in a place like this. This preoccupation with trivialities, this talk about money. I'm what you might call a square, I guess. I'm real, aren't I? I don't know. Sometimes I think you are, and then I see you as part of this elegant decay. Well, that sounds like a high-class brush-off. Is that what it is? <laughs> we got to quit the shop. Last night it was the Jefferson place, and tonight maybe here. Nah, we stay here. But Martha, the cook says it, it comes out of the ocean. It, it, it's tall, tall like a building, and it has got the arms like a pile driver. Oh, 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 oh. I am not afraid. <laughs> For 18 years I'm married to you. <laughs> Nothing scares me anymore. <laughs> I don't know why you had to import a hypnotist. Why don't you get him to perform for us, darling? I don't use hypnotism to amuse drunks. What's that? Uh, look, Bob, why don't you go and, and drink yourself up a nice parade of pink elephants, huh? Last chance, Dorothy. I'll give you one more chance to marry me. Uh, thanks, Bob. We'll have a honeymoon for three. You, me, and a whiskey bottle. It's so thrilling to have you here, Doctor. Absolutely thrilling. My pleasure, madame. Beautiful, isn't she? A strange beauty. I met her the other night at Lombardi's. Oh? Evidently, she made quite an impression, didn't she? Uh, just a minute, please. Uh, Lieutenant James, at the front door. Oh? Please? What can I do for you? I'm very anxious to catch Dr. Lombardi's act. Do you mind? Mind? No, not at all. Hiya, Doc. Hello, Lieutenant. An excellent idea. Very good. <clears throat> a nice little touch. This 
see Dr. Lombardi's got himself another follower. I had him in jail once, but Chapel's lawyer sprung him. We didn't have enough evidence. You're gonna have to help me on this one, Doc. More in your line than mine. You're not going for that supernatural hokum of his. I don't really know what I'm going for. I know he's a killer. He doesn't really deny it. He just laughs at me and says, prove it. And keep your eyes peeled, will you, Doc? All right, folks. Curtain time. Take your seats, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my good fortune to find in this young lady the perfect hypnotic subject. Through her, I will reveal to you some of the hidden mysteries of life itself. Look at me, Andrea. Are you ready? Yes. I shall touch you and soon you will be asleep. Good. Now you can hear everything I say. Raise your right arm, please. Lower it. Now the left arm, please. Put it down, please. Now take your place by the couch. A little forward, please, Andrea. Good. Now sit down on the couch. Sit down, Andrea. She's trying to fight him off. We are privileged to have with us tonight one of the country's leading exponents of psychic research, Dr. Erickson. Since Dr. Erickson has called me a fraud and a charlatan, I invite him to join me on this platform so that he may expose me, so that he may show you why and how I perpetrate a fraud. If you please, Doctor. If you don't mind, I'll sit here with the paying customers. You refuse, Doctor? Go on, Ted. Get up there and show him up. Come on, Erickson. That'll make two phonies. Really, Ted, you should. Please, Ted, you've got to. My next experiment is a most interesting one, Doctor. I shall prove that life is an endless chain. That we are given the gift of it, not for one lifespan, but since the beginning of time. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall give you living proof of reincarnation. Of perpetual life itself. into a deep, deep sleep. Very deep. Your eyes are getting heavy, Andrea. You cannot open them. Will you examine her, Doctor? She's under hypnosis. Go ahead. Now you are traveling back through time and space. Farther. Farther back. Back. Come forward. Come forward quickly. That's better. Now stop when you want to. Stop when you see something familiar. You want to stop now? Where are you? In the Old Man Oxenham Road in London. What is your name? Elizabeth Ann Weatherby. You're smiling, Elizabeth. Is something pleasant taking place? I have brought Captain Ernest Blystone to see me father. He's going to ask for me and in marriage. Dr. Erickson is going to question you. You will answer him.
What year is it, Andrea? 1618, the year of our Lord. Who is the reigning monarch? James Stewart. Who is Lord Chamberlain of his court? The Earl of Somerset. What's his wife's maiden name? Francis Howard. You will no doubt authenticate this information. I will. Now we are moving forward in time. You are older, much older. You're in your last illness, Elizabeth. You're on your deathbed. My son David is at my side. He said he would do as I ask. Now he sits and waits. What did you ask of him? That I be buried in Carrie's book near me husband. And that Ernest Medallion be buried with me. What does that medallion look like? It is a gold shield with one ruby set in it. Is there an inscription on it? Yes. To me loyal subject, Ernest Blystone. It is engraved with King Charles' seal. There, there you see. Thank you, Elizabeth. That is enough. You will rest now. Sleep. Deep sleep. More. Deeper. You're putting her in a cataleptic state. That's dangerous. She survived that danger before. Excuse me, please. Where are you now, Elizabeth? In space, floating in space. Are you alone? There are many others with me. Can I summon you out of the spirit world to be with me? You can summon me. I will come. I call you. can see you, but I don't believe the others can. Those who believe can see. I see her. I do see her. Make your physical presence known to those who believe only what their eyes can see. Open a window. That one. Come back here, Elizabeth. Close the drapes around Andrea. King, come here. No, no, leave him. I'll control him. Please, Elizabeth. There aren't many who can control an animal by hypnosis, are the doctor? No. He did what I told him without a single word. You may return, Elizabeth. Why do you hesitate? this moment? Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to say that the creature who has cost so many lives is on his way here among us even now. <gasps> oh, 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 she's going to faint. You better get more. Quickly. 
What do you mean? Is this house? I don't know. But she's in the ocean now, preparing to come out. Well, Doctor? You're a clever man. I don't know how you did it, but it isn't through science as I understand. I have a way of proving myself to you, but it's going to be harsh. Now you're going back in time to the very beginning. By the power that is mine, I command you. She barely has a pulse. Take her out of this. She stays as she is. You have no right to leave her like this. I have my own right. If you wish to try to take her out of hypnosis, you may do so. You know I can't do that. You induce this state, you must release her. Then she remains as she is. Did you see which way Lombardi went? Out on the terrace. You're not going out there. everything, a Lombardi and all that creature talk. He had us in a panic. He did it deliberately. He's aiming for the big circuits. You don't make much of him, do you? I only know he's an extremely clever man and an evil one. I'm glad your dad asked him to stay over. I want to try and talk to that assistant of his. Professionally? He's got in a state of complete hypnotic subjugation, a virtual slave to his will. I'm going to try and break that hold on her. Good morning, Miss Chappell. Doctor, I've been thinking about your work, Dr. Lombardi. I think it requires some serious study. Oh, good. I'm delighted. I want to talk to your assistant. Of course, any time you wish. Perhaps this morning. Fine. You set it up for me, then. You really poured it on last night, didn't you? That she-creature stuff was a stroke of sheer genius. <laughs> Everyone lit out like the plague was after them. They'll be talking it up today. Yes, I've no doubt of that. Mm. And that stuff on the pier the other night, the way you tied in with that. That was a very fortunate coincidence for us. Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, I shall require more suitable living quarters. Now, shall I stay here till I find them? Thank you very much. I could get away from you for a few minutes anyway. Not even for a minute. Will I never be free of you? Why did it have to be me? It was meant to be. If you knew how I hated it, hated you. Come back. You will do as I say. Come here. Sleep, Andrea. You can hear what I'm saying. You can understand me. You're relaxed, Andrea. Dr. Erickson wishes to talk to you. He's going to try to hypnotize you. You must resist him. You will resist him. He is our enemy. He is trying to destroy us. You understand? Beauty like yours must not be destroyed. 
It belongs to me. I love you, Larry. And you love me, too. Now say it. Say it. No! I hate you with all my heart. I can make you grovel in the dirt. I can turn you into Elizabeth Weatherby. But I can't make you love me. Someday I'm going to kill you. I should kill you, Andrea. But the artist is vain. He can't destroy the beauty he's created. How are you, Doc? Oh, hello. Come in. Lombardi tells me he's coming here today. He agreed to conduct a demonstration on the clinical conditions. Mind if I sit in? No. I'd like to set up a tape recorder. I'm Stymie, Doc. Man is a killer and I can't touch him. A statement like that calls for some proof. I've got none. All I know is he hates the world and everybody in it. Man kills for love, or hate, or profit. Where do these killings fit in? All three, and don't forget the profit angle. Lombardi's become quite a national figure. I don't know if he's responsible for those murders or not, but I do know he's a very dangerous man. Most of the colleagues, they're satisfied to make one theory pay off for them. He's lumped them all together. Hypnotism, spiritualism, age regression, reincarnation, and soul transmigration. He's doing quite a selling job. We all have a secret willingness to believe in some of the things he's offering. The passing of the soul into another body after death. That life is eternal. That we can communicate with the dead. And Lombardi fancies himself the miracle man who's been granted the power to prove these things right. He's an egomaniac playing God. He claims that the life process is continuous, that he can take it back to a former existence and not only communicate with it, but cause it to materialize, to become a physical thing. According to Lombardi, the she creature was the primitive life body of somebody living today. What do you make of that? We're still searching for the answer. Some of the details she's given previously have been proven remarkably accurate. That was the medallion that was given to her husband by King Charles. It was found in a grave near Carisbrook. The headstone read Elizabeth Weatherly Blystone, 1600 to 1651. And it was planted there. Oh, this is preposterous. Do you hold with this nonsense, Erickson? My mind is open. Go on with your experiment, Mr. Lombardi. Uh, Dr. Lombardi, of course. You know, it's quite simple, gentlemen, to disbelieve anything that shatters your smug concepts. I've taken this girl back to a time in her life over 300 years ago. Perhaps I can take her back farther than that. To the time of the pharaohs. Even to the beginning of creation itself. One soul traveling the entire distance. Utter nonsense. I can materialize her in any one of her lives. I can transport her from what she is to what she was. Really, Lieutenant, are we supposed to watch this, this penny arcade drama? Doctor, have I ever been alone in this room? No. And it would have been impossible for me to plant mechanical devices in here to trick you. I don't think so. I'm talking to you, Elizabeth. You're going into a deep sleep. Very deep. She's not responding. Someone in this room is fighting me for her will. Is it you, Doctor? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Deep sleep, Elizabeth. Very deep. That's better. 
You are now suspended in time and space. Now I'm going to give you substance. Not form, but substance. You will take back the soul that once was yours. Andrea will give it to you. Express yourself in movement. Will you take Professor Anderson's glasses off, please? Put them back on. That is enough, Elizabeth. I think we've convinced them. Would you return Andrea's soul to her, please? Thank you. Those who believe can actually see the process of transmigration. I saw nothing. Nor I. Trickery. Very clever, Dr. Lombardi, but absolutely meaningless. You can't see because you don't wish to see. I thought I wanted recognition from you, but now I see it means nothing to me. Now you will awaken. You will feel refreshed, Andrea. You'll open your eyes. You said before you were giving us substance, but not form. Now, what did you mean by that? I could have brought her to you in the flesh. Just as she was 300 years ago. Come now, Doctor. We're too old for fairy tales. Do you seriously expect men of science to... I expect nothing. I want nothing. Come, Andrea. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What do you make of it? I don't know. Well, this belongs to the police department. I better take it along. Sales mark. Thank you, Olaf. I've closed a deal with the Beale Syndicate. 395 newspapers are starting to serialize the Weatherby affair next month. Hmm. How's that for a quick profit, Lombardi? You're a genius, Mr. Chapel. Huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, now that you're in the big chips, you'll be able to find yourself somewhere to stay. <laughs> you know the way women are. Uh, get yourself something big, something nice. You can afford it. No, I'll stay right here. If I decide to move, I'll let you know. King? Oh. King? Where's King? I haven't seen him since early this morning. I hardly see him since Dr. Lombardi took over this place. Unfortunately, Miss Chapel, your dog and I are not compatible. Lombardi warns of more killings. Don't press her luck, Doc. Lay off the predictions for a while. One miss and our profits nosedive. I'm certain our good fortune will continue.
Sorry I've made it so difficult for you to follow me. What were you doing down there? Oh, communing with nature. But now I feel the need of human company. Shall we walk to my house? I was walking with Lombardi when I heard the scream. But I knew he did it. He's a murderer. And I can't touch him. That thing last night, I didn't like it. Unfortunate. Such a nice couple. I feel as though I killed him myself. You push a car over a cliff? Well, hardly. There are two bank books. One in your name, one in Dorothy's. Oh, yes, her dowry. You'll see that each holds a deposit of $250,000. Well, we've done amazingly well. Hmm. We've only just started. That should keep you in style. Somewhere else, I want you to move out of here. No, it's better that I stay. Hmm. <laughs> oh, no, you can't stare me down. I can look right back at you. I'll tell you what I see. I see a dirty sideshow fortune teller with delusions of grandeur. You're very foolish to say those things to me. You're an ignorant man. I assume our business relations are over. What for? I'm onto a good thing. We'll continue our business affairs at my office. Fine. I'll move out tomorrow. I understand you've invited some people here tonight for a demonstration. Tomorrow will suit me fine. Good. You were expecting someone else, huh? Dr. Erickson, perhaps. Well, no matter. We're leaving the country tomorrow, you and I. I'm not going with you. I love him. You'll be with me on the plane. You'll do as I say. I have found the power to resist you. He has given it to me. No one can take you from me. I live only for you. You're the light that shines out of the darkness. I love it. He'll never have you. I'll kill him. You'll kill him. This time, you'll do as I say. I haven't seen you and Dorothy together much lately. What's the matter? Lovers quarrel? Hmm. Well, here's something that'll help you patch it up. $250,000, Dorothy's. And yours. You helped to set it up. There's more coming in. Go over and show it to her. She doesn't know anything about it. This will help you to forget Carlo's little girl, eh? Hmm. I don't think I could forget where the money came from. I told you I was a fool about such things. I'm sure I'll never have another offer like that again. But thanks for giving me the first offer. Hi, Ted. Who are you looking for? Andrea Elizabeth or Elizabeth Andrea? I saw both of them down near the ocean a while ago. Thanks. Oh, Ted. Oh, what's she got that I haven't? Money, breeding, social position. Some people have too much of everything. Guess I had that coming. She's a nice girl, Ted.
Hi, beautiful. Bob, what are you drinking? That's a scotch, bourbon, gin cocktail. No vodka? You must be tapering off. Let me know when you get down to the scotch and bourbon cocktails. There goes the gin. Now I'm down to a bourbon and scotch cocktail. You taught me how to fight him. His power is gone. We'd better be getting back to the house. He'll be looking for you. I don't want to go through with it tonight. You've got to. Resist him publicly and he'll leave you alone. What if I don't? I'll fight him for you. I think I'll win. Just stay here a little longer with me. I'm out of here. I'm listening. Every time this thing is struck, it's been after one of these demonstrations. That's been the pattern. I've checked it. You think he has some way of signaling his accomplices? <laughs> well, if you can call him that. Another thing I've discovered, every time we find the footprints coming out of the ocean, they go back to exactly the same spot. You're going on the assumption that Lombardi's creature is the real thing. Well, that's the only thing I can go on. Otherwise, it's the psychopathic ward for me. How about you? What do you think? As a scientist, I'm hysterical with laughter. As a man out for a social evening, I'm not so sure. In fact, very unsure. All right, folks. Showtime. House lights out, please. Say, uh, send Olaf out here, will you? Sure. Lieutenant James wants to speak to you. Oh. Out on the terrace. Yes, sir. Am I under arrest, I hope? I sure would like to get away from this book shop. Say, have you got a tape recorder? Uh, Mr. Chappell's study. Can you take me there without going through the living room? Oh, yeah, sure. Come right this way. Uh, right here, sir. Thank you. I will touch you gently, and you'll fall into a deep sleep. Your eyes are getting heavy. They're starting to close now. Something's backfired. I will count to four, and you will fall into a deep, deep sleep. One, two, three, four. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my subject is not herself tonight. She, she is too tense. 
you take your place on the couch, please? You have eyes only for mine. You have ears only for my voice. Now you're going into a deep sleep. Your eyes are heavy. Close your eyes and go into a deep sleep. Deeper. Deeper. She, she's dead. You said before you were giving us substance, but not form. Now, what did you mean by that? I could have brought her to you in the flesh. Just as she was 300 years ago. Now, I'm talking to you, Elizabeth. Where were you born? My subject is disturbed tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Her world is disturbed. I feel a menace to the people in this house. I urge you all to leave here at once. Do as he says, everybody. Let's clear out of here. No one boots me out of my home. Get her out of it. Perhaps you can. Get her out of it. You kill me and you kill her. Telephone for two squad cars. Tell them to bring high-powered rifles. Where'll you be, sir? I'll be down on the beach. That's it. Hurry up. Step off the platform. I'll do the best I can. I'll stay here. Then I'll do nothing. I'll show my methods to no one. Father, please. You're going deeper. Deeper. Time is an endless nothing. You're falling through it. She's in the recovery process now. She'll be all right. you get some brush and driftwood, anything that'll burn. What are you going to do with it? Well, Ed said to put a circle around all those prints. And whatever killed them will be back and we'll set fire to it. Bring back some gasoline from the car, will you?
you believe, Doctor? Kill him! the man you loved. I mustn't let you die. Your beauty must live. I will touch you and you will awaken, young and beautiful, freed forever from the past. What I have done, no man can ever do. She'll never be back, will she? No. 